CNN English Test Listening Section Part 1 Here are the directions for Part 1. In this part, you will hear two short news reports. Number 1. Heavy burden for si Question 1. Number 2. More help needed for the needy. Driving through affluent West London, the poverty isn't immediately obvious. Billy McGranigan has been delivering food aid in this part of London for years. The situation, he says, is getting worse. When you actually see the poverty with the children and not having enough, it does get to you. Campaigners argue it's a breach of the UK government's human rights obligations to ensure adequate food. The United Kingdom is the country with the fifth largest economy in the world. It really beggars belief that in this country, increasing numbers year on year of families are going hungry. In just the past five years, the country's largest food bank charity has recorded an increase of close to 50%. It's now delivering nearly 1.6 million emergency food parcels a year. In addition to being a legal question, it's also a simple moral question. Is it appropriate for government to stand by as families go hungry and just wait for charities to step in and fill the gap? The Human Rights Watch report is damning. It gives several examples of single mothers skipping meals so that their children have something to eat. The charity directly links the rising levels of food poverty to the UK government's austerity drive over the past decade, an issue that's proved a flashpoint in British politics. In a statement, a UK government spokesperson has dismissed the latest criticism, describing the report as misleading. We're helping parents to move into work to give families the best opportunity to move out of poverty. And it's working. Employment is at a record high, and children growing up in working households are five times less likely to be in relative poverty. For those relying on food aid now, the government's words are of little comfort. A lot of families can, can't afford electricity. They can't afford to cook when they do get the food banks. A situation, he says, that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Bianca Nobolo, CNN, London. Question one. What? Number one. Heavy burden for... S Question... Number two. More help needed for the needy. Driving through Driving through West London, the poverty isn't immediately poverty obvious. Billy McGranigan has Billy McGranigan been delivering food been aid delivered. in this part of London for years. The situation, he says, is getting worse. Driving through affluent West London. Driving, driving... Driving through Wafflement, driving through Wafflement West Front, the poverty isn't immediately obvious. Billy Mc... McGranagan has been delivering food aid in this part of London for years. The situation, he says, is getting worse. When you actually see the poverty with the children, the children not having not enough, having enough, enough, it does get to you. Get Campaigners argue it's a breach of the UK government's human rights obligations to ensure adequate food. The United Kingdom is the country with the fifth largest economy in the world. It really beggars belief that in this country, in this country increasing numbers, increasing year numbers year 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 the families are going hungry without, without, without the food. In just the past five years, the country's... In just the past five, in, in just the past five years, five years, the country's largest largest food bank charity has recorded an increase of close to 50 percent largest food bank charity has recorded an increase of close to 50 percent it's now delivering nearly 1.6 million emergency, emergency food, food a year in addition year. to being it's a legal be question it's also a simple moral question, question. Moral is it appropriate is it for government to stand, government to stand by, by as families, families go hungry and just, just wait for charity to step into the, the human rights watch death. report is damning it gives several examples of single mothers skipping single meals skipping so that their children have something to eat. The charity directly links the rising levels of food poverty to the UK government's austerity drive over the past decade, an issue that's proved a flashpoint in British politics. In a statement, a UK government spokesperson has dismissed the latest criticism, describing Dismiss the report the as misleading. Describing the report as misleading. To move into work. To give families the best opportunity to move out of poverty. Out of it's, poverty. Working. it's working. Employment is, working. Employment is at a high, high record and high. And children growing up in working households. Employment, employment is at a record high. Employment is at a direct.
is at a record high. Employment is at a record high. Employment is at a record high. Five times less likely to be in relative relative poverty. poverty. For those relying on food aid now, the government's words are of little comfort. A lot of families can can't afford can't electricity. Afford. They can't afford to cook afford when they do cook. get the food banks. A situation, he says, that's unlikely it's to change unlikely to anytime, anytime, soon. anytime soon. Bianca Nobel- Driving through affluent West London, the poverty the poverty is immediately obvious. Billy McGranagan has been delivering food aid in the part of London for years. The situation, he says, is getting worse. When you add to the poverty of the with the children not having enough, it doesn't it does get to you. 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 Campaigners argue it's a breach of the UK government's human rights obligations to ensure adequate food. Breach. Breach of the UK's UK government's human rights obligations to ensure to ensure adequate food. The United Kingdom is a country with the fifth largest economy in the world. It really beggars. It really beggars. It really beggars believe. In this country, increasing numbers year and year, a family going hungry without food. In just the past five years, in, the, in just the past five years, the country's largest bank food charity has recorded an increase of close to 50%. It's now delivering nearly 1.6 million emergency food parcels a year. Emergency food parcel. Yeah, attention to being a legal question is also a simple moral question. Is it appropriate for government to stand by as families go hungry and just wait for charities to step in and fill the gap? And just wait for charities to step in and fill the gap? Just wait for charities to step in and fill the gap? Step in and fill the gap? The Human Rights Watch report is damning. It gave several examples of single mothers skipping meals so that their children have something to eat. The charity directly links the charity directly links the rising levels of food poverty the UK government's austerity drive over the past decade. An issue that is an issue that's proved the flashpoint in British politics.
Chuji drive with Chuji drive over the past decade. In a statement, a UK government spokesman has dismissed the latest criticism, describing the report as misleading. We are helping parents to move into work to give family the best opportunity to move out of poverty and it's working. Employment is a record high. Employment is a record high. Employment employment is on a record high. And children growing up in working homes are five times less likely to be in relative poverty. Working households. For those running on a full day now. Those running on the food day now, the government's words were of little comfort. A lot of families can't can't afford electricity, they can't afford to cook. They do to get the food banks. When they do get the food banks, a situation he says that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Anytime soon. Number two, more help needed for the needy. Driving through Afghan Driving West, through Afghan London, West the London, the poverty isn't immediately obvious. Believe me, Clarkson has been delivering food aid in, food aid in the part, this part of the year. The situation, he says, situation, is, getting he says worse. is getting worse. When you actually see, see the poverty of the children not enough. having enough, it, it does get to you. Campaigners argue it's a breach of UK government's human rights obligations to ensure adequate food. And I came as a country with a quick crash with the economy of the world, the really bad is the belief that in this country, increasing numbers is going to happen with the food. In just the past five years, the country's largest food bank charity has recorded an increase of close to 50%. It's now delivering it's not the different new 1.6 million emergency food parcels a year. It should be a legal question, so it's a signal question. Is it appropriate for government to stand by as far Families go hungry and just wait for a challenge to step in and fill the gap. The Human Rights Watch report is that it gives several examples of single mothers skipping meals so their children have some something to eat. The charity directly links the rising level of food poverty. The UK government's austerity drive over the past decade, an issue that proved a flashpoint in EU British politics. In a statement, UK government spokesperson dismissed it to question describing the report as misleading. Misleading to, to work to give to, work, to give the up. best opportunity, best opportunity to, move to move out of poverty. And it's working. It's, it's working. Employment, Employment is at the record high, high. and, and the children growing up in the working households are five times as so likely to be in a relative poverty. For those who are on food aid now, the government's words are of little comfort. A lot of families can't afford electricity. They can't afford to cook when they do get the food bank. A situation he says that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Bianca Nobolo, CNN, London. Question 1. Part 4. Part 4. Here are the... The following is an interview with Chris Hughes, co-founder of Facebook. My next guest says that My Facebook, guess is, is, too Facebook is too big. Mark Zuckerberg is too Zuckerberg powerful. Is. The company needs to be split up. You probably would not probably expect not such expect ideas such from the co-founder of Facebook, Chris Hughes. Chris Hughes. But that is what Hughes put forth in a New York Times opinion piece entitled, It's Time to Break Up Facebook. And Chris
Chris Hughes, Chris Hughes was a roommate, roommate at Harvard. Harvard. Right, at Harvard. Joey's Joey's been been a, the biggest argument the biggest against your position, against your position um, is, is that this. Facebook, Facebook provides services for free to people. people. Uh, and when people, people do choose to use Facebook, use WhatsApp, WhatsApp, Instagram, yes. they are voluntarily ceding that privacy. They know that Facebook is using it. What's wrong with that? So, that's the free market. Well, I don't think that's quite right for two reasons. First off, I think that users do pay quite a bit to use Facebook. They don't pay with dollars, but they pay with their data and with their attention. We are providing immense amounts of data. I think it's also not true because the space is so locked down. Facebook has become such a strong monopoly that there's no alternative. So without any kind of competition, there's no accountability. The long history of antitrust is that it's a way of holding businesses that have gotten too big and too powerful accountable. So it's built on the same principle of checks and balances that our founders outlined in the Constitution for the different branches of government, but for the private sector as well. Your biggest concern, you say, in the piece is the degree to which Mark Zuckerberg has almost total control over what information we all read about access. Yeah, you know, the way that Facebook is structured as a company, Mark's a CEO, there is a board, but he, because he owns 60% of the voting shares, he's not accountable really to that board. It works more like a board of advisors than anything else. He's not really accountable to users, and thus far, he's not been accountable to government. So one thing I don't spend uh, a time on in the piece, but I think is really important, is that um, we can approach corporate governance differently. There's a, uh, a lot of folks who call for thinking about making sure that boards have a responsibility, not just to the bottom line, but to customers, to uh, suppliers, to the environment, a kind of uh, global responsibility, global which again was what it was like in the 50s and 60s before uh, the revolution over the past few years. So I think that kind of thinking when applied to Facebook would immediately bring accountability to uh, to the company, or if the FTC broke up the company, or if there were meaningful privacy regulation, that too would bring accountability. But the world that we're in right now is one where I do think Mark Zuckerberg has too much power, near unilateral power. Chris Hughes, pleasure to have you on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, unilateral power. Next guest says the Facebook is too big and Mark Zuckerberg is too powerful. The company needs to be split up. You probably wouldn't expect such ideas from the co-founder of Facebook, Chris Huge, but that is what Huge puts forth. That is what Huge put forth in the New York Times opinion piece entitled It's Time to Break Up Facebook. And Chris Huge, who was stuck a book through at the Harvard, joins me now. Joins me now. Joins me now. The biggest argument against your position is that Facebook provides services for free to people and when people choose to use Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, they voluntarily ceding, ceding the privacy. Ceding, ceding the privacy. They know that Facebook isn't using it. Facebook is using it. What's wrong with that? That's a free market. Well, I don't think that's quite right for two reasons. I don't think I don't think that's quite right for two reasons. First off, first off. They uses to pay quite a bit to use Facebook. Quite a bit, quite a bit to use Facebook. They don't pay with dollars, but they pay, but they pay with their data, with their attention. You're providing immense amounts of data. And I think it's also, it's, I think it's so, so true because not true because the space is so locked down. So locked down, Facebook has to become such a strong monopoly. There's no alternative. So for that kind of passion, there's no accountability. 
there's not gonna be a deal. The long he should go, or antitrust. That's why businesses will do the work.